Hi everyone, welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. Guys, so much has been happening, it's not even funny. We're literally preparing for a major hurricane. I'm not kidding. The birth of our child. We just had a baby shower. I'm finishing up custom intention oils. I mean, we just had family coming in and friends coming in and staying with us. And with all of these major events that have been happening for this weekend and past weekend and just in this moment, the only thing that I can think about is coming here and hanging out with you guys. That is love. <laughs> like, literally, that is love. How are you guys doing? How are you guys hanging out? Please pardon the casual appearance and the casual wear today. As you guys know, there has been a lot that's been going on. Nothing bad, all good, but still a lot of things nonetheless. And I wanted to kind of do what it is that I was normally doing, which was like kind of having like a whole setup and so that you guys can watch me as I'm shuffling the cards and all those other things. But the truth is, is um, I don't think we have the time. I don't think we have the time. We do have to do some last minute things like get gas and kind of clean up the yard. We have the party, the baby shower party was this past weekend, which was awesome. But there's like little, still there's like cans of beer because the, the boys had beer and the tables are kind of out there. There's tents and we got to start shutting those things down and we need to have all of this done in like 48 hours, which is so wild. I don't know if it's motherhood or like new motherhood or whatever, but I have such a level of like peace and acceptance with things these days that although there's a lot that quote unquote needs to be done, I have this sense that everything is working out the way that it should. Also, I pulled the charts not only for this weekend, <clears throat> which we'll talk about in this week, but I just have like leading into this and I just feel like a sense of calm and control especially when things are a little bit rowdy because we can see it within the astrology charts. That's how I ended up pulling my dates for the, the baby shower was I pulled the charts, I pulled the cards and knew that I didn't, oh, and then there was my birthday, like when we were celebrating my solar return. I didn't necessarily want to have the baby shower on my birthday because I didn't want to layer it. But I knew that if I waited any longer, the charts and the cards were just kind of like, it's in your best interest to kind of double whammy it. And it ended up being for the best, to be honest with you. Because now, this weekend, we have a major hurricane. And following that, we have no idea what the future holds. We just kind of have to take it day by day, if you know what I mean. So... Welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm literally pulling up the charts. You guys know I'm typically more prepared, but I'm pulling up the charts as we speak. You can pretty much get a whole gist of how I normally do this. I kind of have my um, notes, my computer. I have the a tarot deck here that I've been working with, and we're just going to dive right in. So while I get this pulled up, feel free to take a break, take a pause, grab some tea, grab some water. I'm not drinking anything right now, but that's because I literally ate the entire kitchen before I came on and talked to you guys. That's probably why I have so much energy and also why I'm out of breath outside of the fact that my lungs are crushed <laughs> as this baby is taking up all the space. Either way, let's go ahead and get cozy, let's get comfy, and let's go ahead and dive right in. <laughs> All right, my loves, so hopefully you're comfy cozy and you are ready to dive right in. I've got my chart pulled up. I debated, do I wanna talk about the week that we're in currently or do I wanna talk about the new moon that's happening in the sign of Libra? And I decided that the new moon is probably best. We are gonna sprinkle in the energy of this week and the reason why is because there's still so many major like players, planetary players that are impacting not just the, the new moon that's upcoming, but all of the energy that we've been feeling lately. This is not new energy. I'm not saying that because the major team players that are impacting our lives are retrograde right now. Pluto, Saturn, Neptune, Chiron, and Uranus. 
I'm not saying that they're not, it's not new energy because they're retrograde and retrogrades have a tendency to bring things back from the past. I'm saying that this energy is not new because they've all been retrograde for a while and they tend to switch things up greatly. Like, and by things, I mean the details of our life and the foundation of our lives, not just in our intimate lives, but all over the globe. The other thing that I want you guys to keep in mind, on, uh, keep your eyes out for is the fact that Jupiter, the planet of abundance and expansion and knowledge and wisdom and travel, is currently direct, like moving forward in the sign of Gemini, but soon will be turning retrograde. Let me double check my notes here. Yep, October 9th, 3.04 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And although that's a, a transit and an event that's going to be happening in the future, any time when we have a planet swift, 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 switching motions, <laughs> swifting, Taylor Swifting, any time we have a planet switching motion, meaning like moving from direct to retrograde or retrograde direct, what we have is a discombobulated planet. And what this means is that the energy of that planet is not operating at its best. It tends to be discombobulated, confused, sleepy, sluggish, and we start to feel those effects. Now, one thing that I've been telling you guys, like a broken record since from the moment I've created my YouTube channel, definitely, but also the last few months, anytime when we're working with these retrogrades, is to make sure that you're pulling your natal chart. The reason why you want to pull your natal chart is because it's going to help you to see where these planets that are currently transiting, where they're transiting, aka moving, migrating through your life. Now, I talk very specific information and details of what it is that we can expect, but it's to a general audience. There's no way for me to be able to go as specific and detailed as you deserve and as required in order to get very specific and accurate predictions for your life. But what can help is if you pull your chart. One thing that I was seeing a lot last week and the week before that was with the full moon, I was saying to you guys, make sure that you're looking to see where the full moon falls within your chart and to look at your rising. And the reason why was because, it, I think it was in Pisces, the reason why is because this is going to show where this heightened sense of energy and like explode, like I don't say explosion, but seriously, this magnitude of energy was going to be revealing itself. Healing, op like opportunity, all of those things, believe it or not, you can check out the video that I broke down of of the full moon um and my message there for you guys because it still shows uh trends and things that you might be unpacking still even though you're leaning into the new moon in libra um but a lot of you guys were like just pisces is not in my chart like not at all the thing is is that every single one of the astrological signs that can be found in the zodiac absolutely without a doubt controls or has an influence of some area of your life you may not necessarily have a planet or an aspect or an angle within that sign but you definitely have every single one of us definitely has the astrological sign ruling or control like having an impact in some way of that area of your life. And because there's so many questions, so many questions, and it's a common thing that I'm seeing in the in the comments and the conversation, then I'm realizing that I need to make a whole video about that to make it easier for you guys, which I will do in the near future. Make sure that you're following me on TikTok and Instagram too, because that is probably where I'll probably put a small video or a small clip of it and then post a short, like a short video similar to a reel here on YouTube. That being said, let's go ahead and look into this Libra new moon. Now, Libra, as many of you guys know, or if you don't know, I'll summarize it for you and we'll say superficial. Libra energy and with a new moon tends to draw our eyes and our attention to aesthetic and harmony and partnership and relationships and love and beauty. So those are traits that we can see wanting to incorporate or enter into our lives. It tends to be a very flaky sign, not because it's trying to work our nerves, but because it is oftentimes weighing 
all of the pros and the cons of a situation or trying to mitigate or trying to harmonize with all these with different energies so that everything seems fair and equal and balanced that it can take time for that balance to happen if it's even possible with the new moon that's happening in the sign of libra and again this is going to be happening october 2nd 2 50 p.m eastern standard time with this happening the sign of libra we also have mercury transiting through libra as well and i do want to ask you because as i'm looking at the charts you guys know i'm not going to just look at this one aspect i'm going to look at the chart as a whole I do want to ask you, what does Libra rule within your chart? Where does Venus fall within your chart? Because these are going to be those, you're going to see a little bit more of those trends showcasing themselves at the time of the new moon. I want to ask you, is balance even something that is required? These like balance in the way that you think that it should be. Is it something that is required? Let me go deeper on that. With Libra energy, there oftentimes is a tendency to people please. Maybe not for everyone, but sometimes we can find ourselves displaying those traits. And, or sometimes we can put people before ourselves. Sometimes we can put ourselves before others. And this is where the universe, the planets, begin to suggest to us at a time of the new moon, in order for things to be balanced, it doesn't mean that all things get considered. It means that there needs to be justice and fairness in the situation. This Libra new moon is highlighting the fact that balance and justice and fairness isn't always found in the way that we expect it to. Sometimes it's not this pleasant outcome where everyone wins and everyone gets away with murder, so to speak, but that what needs to be delivered and um, hand it over, whether it be a punishment or a reward, that that happened because that is how the universe kind of balances the scales on everyone's behalf. So when we are looking at Libra New Moon, this is a time for new energy to show up, new perspective to show up, to bring in, into consideration where you may have where you may be owed something, where you may be do something, whether it be an apology, whether it be space, whether it be more freedom, whether it be um, entertainment. For some of you guys, it could be the fact that you're working in your in your businesses, in your jobs, in your life, and you're grinding, you're grinding, and you're grinding, and other people are benefiting from it, but you are getting whittled away. Your energy is just getting... Uh, like sliced up the more that you go on now if you because your mind was wired to be a team player and to make sure that the whole team won or the, that everyone is winning in your mind you're like well it's only fair for me to consider everyone else but the truth is is that that's all that you've been doing and there's a balance there's um an extreme that's happening where everyone else's happiness has been factored into everyone else is faring well but but you so with this new moon in Libra don't be surprised if you start having revelations or the, the, the universe starts testing you and challenging you to see where you may not have been fair or where you may be owed or do justice in a certain area within your life think about Someone who has who prioritizes friendship and community and connection and constantly accepting someone's faults and someone's um, imperfections to the detriment of you and your goals or your feelings. And that person makes excuses and you make excuses for them time and time again. And their their behavior doesn't change. They expect you to stay and remain the same for that reason. Things will never change and you will always find yourself waiting on the sidelines or being disrespected or being overlooked or taken advantage of. Is that fair to you? So with this Libra new moon, although your mind and your heart and your intention could be to look at, okay, how can I make things right and easier for others? The universe at this point is saying, we are looking out for your best interest because you are part of the greater collective and we see your fairness and justice like that's what we're working on for everyone 
all things considered. So although this is a new moon, and although this new moon tends to highlight partnerships and relationships and harmony, be very careful and very mindful of how the universe makes sure that it's reading all the energy and makes sure that everything is fair and all things are considered. Because even though it sounds pleasant and sounds easy, it can bring up tricky situations that are working to remove you from places and people and things that do not have your best interest at heart or they benefit more from your generosity, your kindness, your consideration than you benefiting from them like it's not balanced at all. So yes, this Libra new moon will work to balance off those scales. That's what that's going to look like. The other thing that this can do is it can open a door. And I want to talk to you about the door and the opportunity that I see within the chart that is absolutely stunning. Venus, which is actually the ruling planet of Libra, is transiting through the sign of Scorpio. This has a lot to do with intensity, emotion, authenticity, depth, passion, intimacy. And she, Libra, because it's a feminine sign, is in this really strikingly beautiful trine with Mars, ruling masculine energy, drive, ambition, what we chase after, transiting through super sensitive Cancer. We talked about uh, Mars's transit through Cancer and how sensitive and emotional that this could be for many of us and oftentimes kind of triggery, but we also need to look at how we advocate and fight for the things that it is that we like and love and respect because it's valuable to us. Cancer is a cardinal sign. Mars is active. And even though Mars transiting through Cancer is not comfortable at all, it's doing the best that it can. And it's teaching us a lot about ourselves to fight and show up for the things that are emotionally worth it. And what we're investing in are things that feel like home to us, whether it be there or we're working on manifesting it. The next planet that is in this really stunning trine is, believe it or not, Saturn. Saturn is currently retrograde, transiting through the next and final uh, water sign, Pisces. This has been really interesting because it's been really challenging in teaching us about boundaries, personal boundaries, respecting and trusting our intuition, making sure that we're not being cheated and lied to, that we're not being manipulated. This is so interesting because as soon as uh, Saturn entered into the sign of Pisces, this idea of people in positions of power that have been in positions of power or control or the way that the rules have been established has been actively being taken down. Um, we're seeing this globally. We're seeing this in the news. We're seeing this in entertainment and how all those pieces fall together. And now that Saturn is retrograde, we're watching those people in those positions of power being completely dismantled, destroyed, and the, the mask, the facade that they've been wearing, the lies that they've been getting away with have been revealed. This is the year of exposure. Why? Because of the position of these planets, but also the retrograde cycles revealing these truths and these conversations of the past that before we couldn't even talk about. So it's really interesting, but when it comes to our lives, Saturn's transit through Pisces in this beautiful trine with um, Mars and Venus um, in Scorpio just creates this insane trine. And trines are so symbolic in astrology world because it's literally like a portal, like a womb, like the entry point from one thing to the next. And it means that all of these energies of these planets are working cohesively together and in agreement in order to enter something into your life. So this is a wonderful time and a wonderful signal to trigger the universe to bring love, to bring abundance, to bring emotional fulfillment, to bring passion and purpose into your life. And I'm really interested to see what the tarot cards show when it comes to those details. So those are a lot of things that we can look forward to, not only relationships, excuse me, healing, but also the revealing of truth and the balancing of, of energies so that things feel more fair and balanced. And this is the new chapter. This is the new way that you are starting your life and even maybe your legacy, which is so exciting. It does go so deep. And I really think that with um, those of you guys that believe in setting intention or working your magic or setting like praying or whatever this is one of those times where for many there's this level of exhaustion with these types of planets and how they've been moving lately um but to go to the go to the universe go to god go to the divine and have that conversation a little further 
asking for relief, asking for balance, asking to be considered. I just, and the reason why, let me, let me stop and interrupt myself before I go a little further, is because we have to be, like the universe hears our thoughts and knows our heart, but we have to be very active, in my opinion, in speaking to the universe, speaking to God, speaking to the divine, our ancestors, and inviting them to inter, intercept on our behalf, to intervene. If not, we are kind of going along with the waves and the, of the ocean, which isn't always a bad thing, but when your life is like that, it can feel out of control. And in my belief, in my personal belief, it's very important that the universe, the divine, the ancestors, your angels and your guides have a chance to prove themselves to you, not that they need to. But when you speak out to the universe and you say, this is what I want and need, this is how I want to feel, it gives them the chance and the permission to say, I've been waiting for you to have a conversation with me so that I could prioritize this for you too. And I feel like so many of you guys are a little exhausted and kind of tired of being caught in this wave. It's all well and good and it's wonderful to take breaks away from manifesting or praying or setting intention, but don't stay away from that sacred space and that sacred conversation for too long. I've had a conversation recently with someone who said, you know, I have been lately within the last few years, this is their them saying this, I've been on the plan of God knows my heart. And I listened to them and I respected what they were saying. And you guys know me as a Virgo, I always oftentimes have to scale myself back from putting in my two cents and or intuitively contributing to the conversation or in contributing like my intuition to something that it is that I'm feeling and I'm sensing. Um, so in this situation, I held my tongue. But it was interesting because I was kind of observing, this is someone that's been in my life forever, and I was kind of observing, and I'm always observing, those who are closest to me, my friends, my family. And I'm like, it's interesting that you're saying, like, God knows your heart, which of course, but if you look at the direction of your life and how things are unfolding, you have this sense of, like, discombobulation, like things always kind of... Um, disrupting you like being caught in the ocean of life and always getting kind of like knocked over head like your feet over your head again and again and again and the frustration that is that you feel with the universe but God knows your heart like you're kind of leaning into this idea of God knowing your heart it's true and I'm saying this for a reason it's true that the universe the divine God however God is however you want to say knows your heart but do you have a conversation with that power that the powers that be or with the universe to talk about your heart and to talk about your feelings and to to ask I don't know what I want but I want you to intervene or I want this or I want love or I want compassion or I want kindness I want more patience I want to feel free I want to have a change of plans I'm scared I'm nervous that conversation even though the divine the universe knows your heart to be able to share your heart and to talk about your heart helps to increase this feeling of intimacy and connection that is priceless, but also will change your life and the direction of your life. Why? Because you allowed the divine God and ancestors, angels and guides to come in and be an active participant in the things that it does know about you. It's participating and, and helping to make those things happen. So I just wanted to put that out there. We do have, again, there's a reason why I'm saying that, we do have these planets, Venus, Mars, and Saturn, in very emotional signs. Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. Yes, they're known for their emotion, but don't forget, they're also known for their intuition and their vibes and the connection and the spirituality and the depth and the intimacy that they have the capacity to go to. And at this new moon in the sign of Libra, which is all about... You know, it's kind of known about being beauty, and that's how the rest of the internet would talk about it. Beauty, aesthetic, love, partnerships, relationships, yes, but let's go deeper than that. Let's partner and align ourselves with our spirituality, with our path, with our truth, with connection, and intimacy, and depth, because we do have this wonderful window of opportunity. And wherever that conversation with the divine takes you, whether it be you're manifesting your soulmate, your twin flame your future life, whatever that is, your future home, your house, a job, a purpose, a bag, a napkin, a sandwich, whatever that is, then let it be, let it be, but just have that conversation is, is what I want to say. So 
I took up 20 minutes of your time, roughly. What if we decided to shuffle the tarot and went a little deeper? I would normally take a, a little pause and get a word from our sponsors, but again, we have some major hurricane energy coming and um, some major work that we need to do. So I'm just gonna dive right in, if you guys don't mind. The tarot deck that I'm working with will, is linked in my Amazon storefront. So if you would like to connect with that and to see not only the tarot decks that I like to work with, but also other things that I've been vibing with that I pick up on, not just in the tarot and spirituality realms, but in my personal life, things from vitamins, which I use virtual vitamins, to kitchenware, to garden stuff. You guys know I have chickens and dogs. You know, the list goes on and on. Just the things that it is that I like to use in my day-to-day -day life. So, all right, angels and guides from the highest lights in the universe, we thank you so much for this time that is that we have here together. We want to talk to you directly through the tarot, using the tarot as a tool to communicate with you and to get insight and clarity into what it is that we can expect for the week ahead and also this Libra new moon. Let me actually go ahead and pause because my alarm system is gonna be beeping and that's annoying. All right, we are back. So the cards that jumped out initially are interesting because we have, and I'm gonna ask for clarity on this, we have the Hierophant. Hopefully you can see that. The Five of Cups, the Queen of Cups reversed. Very interesting to see the Queen of Cups reverse and the Five of Cups showing up as well as the Page of Cups reverse here. When we have this beautiful trine that's happening in the water signs, which the Queen of Cups, whether she's upright or reversed, she rules that energy. We also have the Five of Cups here and the Page of Cups, so we do have this signal towards our emotion and our feelings and not just emotional feelings, but intuitive feelings. What are we sensing? What are we picking up on? And I also want to say, with the higher font, there's this nod towards normalcy and what is your normal or creating a new normal for yourself, especially under the light or lack of light because with new moons, it's dark. But with the new moon in Libra, higher font, whenever this card shows up, it talks about our routines, our rituals, our practices that are not necessarily spiritually inclined or spiritually in tune. It's the, 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 the routine, the, the physical breakdown of why we do what we do. Like, But sometimes if we're not careful, the heart and the meat of it, like the feeling, the emotion could be missing. We're just kind of going through the motions. This isn't necessarily a bad thing because we do have, as I'm looking at the tarot, we do have three cards here that are highly, highly emotional. In fact, they may be needing to, I don't want to say express themselves, but they may need to be needing to be poured into or they need to pour themselves out. This means that there's something here, not of lack of emotion or lack of intuition or lack of feeling. Um, because there's a lot of that here. I see this with the higher font. I see this as a awareness or incorporating the steps that you can take or the practices that you do, good or bad, that help you to be active, thriving, fulfilled, confident, capable. Why? Because you also have the queen of wands here. Now that's kind of a mouthful. So let me go ahead and say this and break it down in a different way, right? We have the queen of cups reversed. And when she's reversed, she's she can be manipulative. She can be moody. She can be um, sneaky, conniving from an emotional perspective. This doesn't necessarily have to be someone else. It could be you. And why? Because you may have found up until this point that this is the only way that you can get your needs met. This is the only way that you can be heard. This is the only way that you feel comfortable being loved. Why? Because the Hierophant shows what we do. 
consistently in order to hit an outcome or hit a goal, right? Just because of the Hierophant doesn't mean that we're in the temple all the time or the Catholic Church. This card represents so many different areas of our lives. So how are we operating on our day-to-day -day routine? Our, what is normal for us? If you see, looking at your normal routine, that it's not healthy, it's not constructive, it is creating barren energy or an extreme or overswelling, and there's imbalance there, right, in your emotions, in your intuition, in the vibes, in abundance, security for yourself, then this means that the new moon, again, is going to highlight that energy so that you can begin to change it to replace it. Now, this is really interesting and this is very humbling because the next few cards that we have are actually the Queen of Pentacles reversed and the Page of Pentacles. This means that something that we were doing or something that we incorporated or something that was a foundation to help us to receive security, abundance, and stability that we need, that we crave, may be lacking. So, or it's broken, or we're overdoing it. We need to reevaluate. This is a wonderful opportunity, again, because we have um, Pluto, Saturn, Neptune, Chiron, Uranus, retrograde, but also Jupiter, the planet of abundance, is soon going to be turning retrograde in the sign of Gemini, which is teaching us how to open our minds, open up our, our, our thoughts, our perspective, our conversation, to consider different perspectives so that we are not overscaling ourselves or outscaling. I don't know if that's the right word, but overdoing it and under receiving or overplaying our role, over giving, you know, or under, under, under giving. So um, I hope this is making sense if you guys have any questions about this, but really what it is is like really making sure, especially if you look at what Libra rules within your chart, and I know that some of you guys are like, Libra rules nothing. It does. It rules a chapter of your life, um, and I, I, I will promise to do this video for you guys, I promise, so that you can see what it is that I'm seeing so you can see where this falls but um, and how to look for where it falls and how to look for what it rules. But look to see what Libra rules because this is where that new moon is going to be directing a lot of its energy so that you can begin to redirect your attention to say, okay, I could do a lot better when it comes to how I take care of my health and my, and my well-being, you know, or I could do a lot better with my sleep habits and how that impacts my energy levels. My old normal was to operate in such such a way, but if I'm being honest with myself, it has been depleting. We have the Five of Cups here. Five of Cups is the card of loss, depression, and trying to look at things half the glass half full or half empty. But really what it is talking about here within this tarot reading, and I talk about how to go deeper in reading tarot in Sacred Circle Tarot School. I'll leave the links down below as well as the coupon code so that you guys aren't reading, staying in the place where you're reading superficial level that you can go deeper with these readings so that you're not constantly just kind of like staying with like superficial meanings and you're able to take your readings to the next level for yourself but also your clients for your business etc 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 the five of cups doesn't necessarily represent depression or pessimism it represents the fact that is in this reading that emotionally something is being depleted or pulled away from you that needs to have some attention needs to be addressed before this continues to go any further and if you take that pause and you look at the foundation, the Queen of Pentacles, and you have that humbling come to Jesus moment with yourself, and you're just like, honestly, I could be better in this area of my life, then you have Page of Pentacles, then you have something to build upon. At least the new moon can see that for you, but it, it won't happen if you're not able to be honest, if you're not able to address, if you're not able to look back, and if you like um, are overconfident, over cocky, and are not willing to change, to adjust, or to self-evaluate. This is how when you self-evaluate, when you look within, it helps you to see if there really is an imbalance, if you really are overgiving, if you really are not patient with your journey, if you're not patient with others and areas that you can improve or areas that you can remove yourself away from or add yourself to so that the overall quality of your life and your experiences reflects your intention and this thought that you've that you've been building upon. Let's go ahead and turn this Queen of Pentacles from reversed to right side up. 
the potential is all here. You have the Page of Pentacles hand in hand with the Queen of Pentacles reversed. All she needs to do is get, <clears throat> excuse me, a new idea, a new plan, so that the water that she was pulling, the, the well that she was pulling the water of her life up from, now dry. She can start taking steps to another place where the well is full so that the original well can refill itself and the well is you. Like, does that make sense? I feel like sometimes I'm like sharing my metaphors and then it's just like, Phew, like sometimes over people's heads are just like, just what are you talking? Well, the majority of you guys are like, it hits. But then I always have, it's my Virgo mentality where I'm just like, there's gotta be someone who's lost, you know? But I do hear more often than not like positive positive feedback and just being like, yeah, no, it does make sense. Now for me, let me go ahead and pull my chart up real quick because I'm not gonna lie to you guys, as I'm sitting here and I'm looking at the chart for the new moon, I'm wondering how does this impact me in my life? Okay, so Libra naturally rules my fifth house. Um, Libra and Scorpio rule my fifth house. So this could have, oh my God, ah! I didn't even realize this. Um, you would think that I would like have my personal chart memorized, <laughs> but no, I, I'm always pulling my personal chart, but the thing is I'm always pulling the charts for the week ahead and for full moons and new moons way more than I pull it for myself. So I never remember, <laughs> I never remember. So it's really interesting to look at this chart now. But Libra actually rules my fifth house of children and creation and play and joy. So with this new moon that would be happening, this would be activating that energy of are there things that I could be doing or plans that I could be making to help me to prepare for motherhood, Queen of Cups, reversed here, um, especially when it comes to replenishment or asking for help or maybe not expecting myself to do everything like I always do because that's the hierophant there that's my normal and we're entering into new normal like new new territory I'm wondering too with the queen of wands showing up if there's a friend or someone here that you can reach out to or I could reach out to for help instead of me taking up upon myself because the page of cups is reversed which means that you could ask for I don't want to say a handout because it's not a handout but like you could you could you could technically ask for help, but maybe you choose to do it all yourself. And that's an interesting thing because the Queen of Cups and the Queen of Pentacles are both reversed. And these energies are about receiving, not always giving and nurturing, especially when they're reversed, unless you've been barren and not giving enough, which that is not how I move. And especially if we're looking at Libra energy when it comes to balance, there has to be more incorporating of partnership and community and connection of like-minded individuals who are equipped and ready to help. Wow, see how it all falls together? Like, so interesting. So definitely, again, look to see what Libra rules within your chart. Feel free to have a dialogue with me or us, the collective, the community down below in the comments, letting me know how the piece of this puzzle seem to be falling together for you, but also give room and space for the story of this new moon to unfold and show you what it wants to show you instead of you assuming. So I just assumed, like if I was doing a reading for myself and I was a client getting a reading from my professional self, if that makes any sense, then that would be my prediction that I would hand over in a nutshell. Having said that, I also want to put a pin in it and allow the energy to unfold even like a week, a week and a half, maybe two weeks after the new moon, um, especially the way that the transits are moving these days because a lot of things are just changing and change can be hard, but you are harder or softer, whatever it is, <laughs> how you identify. Anyway, guys, thank you so, for some of you guys, you might actually need a little bit of rest. You might be not resting enough. So listen to your body and your energy there. That might be where the balance comes from. So having said that, I'm going to go ahead and go. Please wish me luck when it comes to us putting things away in the backyard. We did clean up enough of the baby shower, but there's some chairs, some... We, re we removed the tents, but we have some umbrellas that are up, and we need to do a little extra 
lockdown for the chickens uh, to make sure that everybody is good and making sure that wind chimes are pulled down because this is going to be a major hurricane. I don't have a feeling of panic in me at all. Again, a big part of it is because my intuition is telling me not to panic. I also have a cloud of protection around me that has been there since before I got pregnant with our little one, um, but which is so exciting. <laughs> She's so cute. She's not here in the earthly She's not walking, you know, she's not, she's inside of me <laughs> still, but she's so cute. Like she's definitely developing a personality. <clears throat> she's <laughs> just like me. So as far as I know, so we can't wait to meet her. But anyway, um, yeah, there's some things that, so yeah, wish me luck with uh, getting this stuff taken care of and with maybe potentially evacuating. Um, we're going to be going as a family, which is going to be so cool and so connected. But for those of you guys that are in the line of this hurricane or wherever you're at, regardless, please be safe. Please be safe. Please listen to your intuition. Please pray. Please set intention. Don't raw dog the world right now, please, because it's just bigger than us. You don't need to be doing life without the divine. You don't need to be doing life without your ancestors and your angels and your guides. It's just too much. You know, if if you're someone who works magic and, you know, oils and candles help you, which it helps me, do that. Pray, set intention, take your quiet time, listen to your intuition, especially now. The karma and by karma, I mean the lessons that you will learn are going to high key come through you taking your intuition seriously. Are you continuing to ignore it? Do not be someone who continues to ignore it. That's not a threat. That shouldn't freak anybody out unless you have a, a, a moment that you need to reflect within yourself and it's reflecting a truth that you didn't want to look at. And if that's the case, that has nothing to do with me. That has everything to do with you. But don't go through this rest of our lives rest of your life rest of our lives because we're in this together 100 percent just raw dogging life it's just not it's not um it's not recommended we want to be spiritually clean spiritually protected we want to look after ourselves and we want to invite the angels the guides our ancestors the divine into our lives so that the level of protection and blessing is around us regardless also you can share for those of you guys that are are trying to protect from sharing news or information you can still share news you don't have to be a um barren or not share good news or worry about evil eye those things exist but when you are prayed up when you are protected when you're working with your oils and your candles and making sure that your spiritual your spiritual hygiene is clean you don't have anything to worry about now you will know because that's been a common theme all of this year discernment the word discernment knowing what to say if to say anything at all and who to say it to and um if you continue to practice that you should have no worries you can continue to live i don't want to say a normal life because what is normal these days but a life that is in alignment and authentic and high vibey and joyful and real to for you for you because at the end of the day this life is about you and what you're doing and how you feel and how you're able to contribute and share with others in a way that feels good and authentic to you and also helps you to develop your gifts that's what it's really all about so that's a mouthful but i love every single one of you guys that goes without saying um i did need to take and i did say this on bahati love notes for those of you guys that are subscribed I need to take the week or the a few a few days longer to focus on family and focus on the baby shower. Um, so you guys knew that that was going to happen. That's kind of tapering off now, and I'm going to get back to our regular, consistent shuffling. Bahati Love Notes is essentially like my version of Patreon, where I shuffle and pull for that that small collective, and we read the energy. I also will talk a little bit more about my personal life for those of you guys that are interested in it. And if not, the tarot and astrology that we do there is what you can expect. Um, it's a membership. 
I'll leave the coupon code down below. My voice is starting to give out. <laughs> Um, so if you love having readings for me, if you love diving deep into the tarot and love to have your energy checked in on and have guidance and intuitive messages, there is that for you to benefit and to profit off of or to benefit off of. I'll leave the links down below. Until then, you guys, I'm sending you all of my love. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I'll see you in my next one. Stay safe. Stay safe. Use your discernment. You will be fine. We have nothing to worry about. I'll talk to you guys in my next one. Bye.